Sketchbox Premium um, overview and demonstration. So first, I'm going to go over the prices with you guys. And I, I get my prices from a couple sources at this point. I do try to get an initial price from the products site. So if they have a price, I will list that price. But often these products do not have a listed MSRP where I can easily find it. Um, so I don't always get to use that price. So um, the premium box has two items in common with the basic box this month. The Pentel color brush and the Daler Daler Rowney FW Pearlescent ink. Uh, fortunately, this month I had two different colors of ink since I am reviewing both boxes this month. So I get two beautiful colors of this pearlescent ink. And honestly, I'm really pleased because I, I've used this ink for a while. I, I really enjoy using this ink. Um, it has a beautiful iridescent color and it can be used straight from the bottle or diluted. And because it's acrylic base, it is waterproof when it fully dries but it can be blended out with water before then. So the premium box also includes two Montana extra fine acrylic markers, one Derwent graphic paint line painter, and one Prismacolor um, extra fine technical pen. They do call these illustration markers, but most people do know them as technical pens. And it is a felt tip technical pen with a metal sheath around the felt. Um, I am also including for this demonstration my um, the white Tacalon Princeton brushes that were included in my basic box. The premium box did not come with any sort of brushes at all. Um, so I am pulling from a previous box for this demonstration. And if you guys are interested in the overview and price breakdown for the premium box, please check out um, my other videos. So uh, going through the prices... Um, the FW Pearlescent Acrylic Ink was $6 on Paper and Ink Arts. That is a calligraphy store online shop. Um, they have all sorts of goodies for watercolorists and for uh, hand letters and for calligraphers. So if you are interested in those things, I do highly recommend you check it out. I've purchased from them a few times, but they are not affiliated in any way with my blog and they are not a sponsor. So that is my unbiased opinion. Um, or $4.59 on Dick Blick. And for those of you who cringe when I say that word, I'm so sorry it bothers you. Um, the Pentel brush is $8.39 on the Pentel site or $6.19 on the Accursed Dick Blick site, which I happen to love. Um, the Derwent line painter, there was no price given on the official Derwent site, so I went with Dick Blick. It is $3.96 uh, $3 open stock. They do sell these in sets. It would be cheaper to purchase the set and break down the set or buy colors in bulk. I, you can read my blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. The entry for this review will have a breakdown for that as well if you're curious. Um, Montana acrylic markers. I received two, white and black. Those are listed on the card, by the way. Um, the Each one is $5.00. 45 cents on Dick Blick because there is no MSRP on the Montana site that I found. Um, I'm sure there is an MSRP and I'm sure one of you guys will point it out to me. Um, and if you buy a set of these, uh, the extra fines are available on Dick Blick in a set of six. It is cheaper. Again, check the blog for that price. And the Prismacolor illustration marker, fine line marker, technical pin is $3.49 on Rex Art or $2.39 on Dick Blick because Prismacolor slash Sanford slash Newell Rubbermaid, they don't like to give MSRPs on the Prismacolor site itself. So you do, I do have to go elsewhere to find prices. So on the high end, this box, which is $35 plus $5 shipping, so $40 total, on the high end, this box is worth $32.74. Um, Using common artist resources that most of us do use, it is $22.58. So that's a $10 discrepancy between your high end and your low end in terms of what you're paying. And there's still a $3 discrepancy, though, between the price of the box itself and the materials inside. So um, I know many of you have encouraged me, uh, it harangued me, some of you, into giving the premium box a shot. So I did do that in May. That is only due to the generosity of my backers on Patreon. Um, 
I used some of the funds that I that had been raised through my Patreon to help subsidize the cost of this box. Um, I have not paid. I'm not sponsored by Sketchbox. I'm not paid by Sketchbox. I do this of my own free will and out of my own pocket. So it does get expensive. So thank you so much, so much to my patrons for helping to make this possible. I sincerely appreciate it. You guys are so wonderful and supportive. So thank you very, very much. So moving on to the demonstration, I am going to start with watercolor paper. And um, I'm going to go ahead and so these things over here were from the basic box. The top is the FW acrylic ink in the color they sent for my basic box. And the bottom is the black uh, color brush ink. But I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate those quickly for you guys as well. Um, because some of you may not have watched the um, basic box demonstration. Now you do need to shake these acrylic inks because they do separate. And we're going to use the Princeton brushes that came in my basic box because the premium box doesn't come with any brushes at all. I'm going to go ahead and that's a nice color. Although I do think the moon violet that came in the other box is a little bit nicer. So that is how it looks out of the bottle. Now, because it's acrylic, as long as it's still wet, you can blend it out with water. So, ooh. Looks very pretty, like a mermaid. Oh gosh, I think I know what I'm gonna draw. That'll be two mermaids then. Um, so it is, um, in my opinion, I really like it blended out. It's got this nice kind of aqua quality that isn't, as, I mean, this is a green, like a greenish aqua, but as you add water, it does feel more like aqua. The camera's picking up it as sort of a neon green, but it definitely is more of an aqua. So let's go ahead and open up this Cantel color brush. And since I have two this month, I will probably give the second one to another artist. Because that's what I do try to do when I have duplicates of materials. I do try to spread. Oh. The cat just unplugged everything. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I may have lost all of my post notes for this, so I might be rewriting them. Enjoy the joys of cat ownership. My my friends and followers who also own cats understand. So to get this thing activated, there's a red ring that's in between the uh, screw on cap and the body, the, the ink compartment. And when you remove that cap, the brush can access the ink or dye inside. And to get it going, you do need to squeeze it and then store it um, vertically to get that ink moving. This one's feeling a little stubborn. Come on. There it goes. And it can take it can take a minute. It can take a while. Uh, I personally prefer the Pentel pocket brush over these. But in fact, I think while this one gets going, I will switch to the one I already opened. Because it's the same thing, same color, everything. So on watercolor paper like this, you're going to get a dry brush effect. Which for my comic artist friends, if you're looking for a dry brush effect combined with the ease of use and portability of a pocket brush, consider using watercolor paper or a mixed media sketchbook. Now, these are water-based and they do use dye rather than pigment. So they are not necessarily archival, but they really make a nice sort of ink wash. Now the problem with that is you do get some color chromatography. The color does separate out because it's dye based as example, as shown in this example that I did earlier for the other video. And um, I did do a swatch to allow it to dry for 24 hours. Um, in my experience with these, when you add water later, they do um, reactivate, which could be, that could be really useful for you. It could be horrible for you. That is something I definitely think you should know. Hence why I'm bringing it up and hence why we're doing this test. So we're going to go and switch over to this black sketchbook I have, which I use for a lot of my opacity tests. I bought it several years ago and uh, I don't like sketching on it. So it works really well for opacity tests.
And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out that moon violet and swatch everything. Well, everything that would have an opacity to it. So we're starting with waterfall green, which came in my premium box. It's waterfall green. And although this black paper isn't designed to handle um, water media, you can use acry white, uh, acrylics on it if you are sparing with your water. But there are also like black canvases and black watercolor papers if you enjoy using opaque media on a black surface. And that is the moon violet. And you can see they stand up really nice on black paper. So if you're a hand letterer or a calligrapher, this might be something that you'd be interested in. So next we're going to take a look at the graphic line paper painter. It has a 0.5 tip. I mentioned in the unboxing video that I have some others. As you can see, they do separate if they're not used. So you shake them because they have a shaker ball inside. Now my problem with these, and I've shown them off in other videos, my problem with these is that they tend to get explodey. And I will show you. See, this one is separated to the point where all of the opaque inside of it isn't there anymore. But yeah, so that was minted, right? Yeah, minted. Silver Far Fox. This one, Fox. This one has held up a little bit better, and it's a really nice opaque pen, but it is, they are prone to bleeding out, as you saw right there. So what came in my premium box was one called Envy, and it's a nice apple green. And this hasn't even been started. I just took the paper off. So I'm shaking it up, and then you have to pump it. So you depress the nib in all the way. It's not going to ruin the nib. It's meant to do that because these have to be primed. Ooh, that's a nice. So that is Envy. And I have been told that these have acrylic inside, but the barrel reads water-based pigment painter, and they may actually be made of the same stuff that Posca markers are made out of. So next, I have two acrylic markers from Montana. And if you guys give me a minute, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab some of my other acrylic markers. So this is what I currently own in acrylic markers. And acrylic markers are sort of, if you are someone who's very detail oriented, these are sort of the best of both worlds between markers and using acrylics um, because they're very portable, they're very handy. They don't create a lot of mass. You don't need brushes to use them, although you can use brushes with them. And as you can see, I didn't unpackage these yet. They did come shrink wrapped. And these are the extra fine. So they have sort of a bullet-esque nib to them. Um, I also have a fine that was sent to me in, um, I think it was in Art Snacks. And the fine is much larger than the extra fine. And both the extra fine and the fine are both huge compared to the graphic marker, which is like um, a fine liner size nib. And I will zoom in so you guys can see that. And also so I can take a photo for the blog. I also own some Liquitex acrylic markers. And these are chisel nibbed. And I don't know, they might come in other nibs now, but when I bought them, they this size only came in chisels. So that is how the chisel nib works. And it's kind of dry and it's kind of scratchy. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Montana. So I'm shaking it up to get it all mixed. And I primed it, whoa. This is fine though. Look at that. That's 
like about the same size as Envy. I would say this is like a 0.7 at biggest. That's cool. I thought it was going to be more like a bullet nib. So because it is acrylic, you can, as long as it's wet, activate it with water. Once it dries, though, it's not going to really go anywhere. So let's get the black marker primed as well, although it's not going to show up on this. So, pretty cool. Oh, sorry. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move this to the side. And return back to the watercolor paper. And I'm going to demonstrate one last thing on its own, the Prismacolor. Uh, now these are referred to as like fine line markers or illustration markers. So when you're Googling for this and you want to find this exact thing, it's the Prismacolor illustration marker or fine line marker. I don't really think of these as markers. I think of these as technical pens. And this is 005. So it is a teeny tiny line. So tiny that I pretty much Never use that size because it's just, I'm heavy handed and I will ruin it. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that size. And I'm, I'm not like, that's not a slam at Sketchbox for including it. I'm just saying my personal preference is not towards that. So that is Envy. Let's go ahead and add some water to it. And these are designed to be used as mixed media markers, which is really cool. Of course, you're never going to blend out this initial line. I was scrubbing pretty hard. Now, let's switch over to the black acrylic, which is very fine. And I am curious if black acrylic is Copic proof. So, ooh, look at that. That's so much nicer than the Pentel, because it's like a much richer sort of lamp black or uh, carbon black or Nero black than the sort of blue black that was in the Pentel Arts. So I'm going to do a Copic test up here, but I have to let that dry for 24 hours. So I'll have to check in with you guys again. And this is the white. Let's do that over the Pentel art. So this could even be used for corrections. And you can pump out more ink by pumping it. And the cool thing about these Montana pens, these Montana acrylic markers, is they're refillable and you can replace the nibs. So for those of you who are familiar with alcohol markers, these are sort of like the Copics of acrylic markers. If you're serious about acrylic markers and you really want a large collection that you can maintain rather than replace, these are one of the brands you should buy if you're interested in that. So I think I've done a basic demonstration of everything that was included in my May Sketchbox Premium Box. I am going to combine the contents of the two boxes for my challenge, um, and I will see you guys with that soon. Uh, I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you found it informative. I hope if you're thinking about Sketchbox and you're not sure whether or not you should go with premium or basic, if you can afford to have that dilemma, um, I hope this helped you guys out. Um, I am still not really impressed uh, with the premium over the basic. It still falls short of the dollar mark, and that's always a big problem for me. Even using the higher the MSRP or the manufacturer prices, it's still falling short but for both boxes, um, which I find disappointing, and that's kind of a deal killer for me. So that alone is a reason why I couldn't recommend these boxes, especially to someone who might be on a budget or an, an artist who is just starting to build a studio. They just don't have the money to spend like that. So um, that is my opinion. I know many of you feel very differently. I appreciate that. I appreciate where you're coming from, and I'm not out to slam either of these boxes. I just want to present them fairly so to help people make a decision one way or the other as to whether they're right for them. Again, I'd like to thank my fantastic, generous patrons for their support and their funding. I couldn't do this without you guys. It does get very expensive. If you would like to help support more content like this, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. The money raised from that goes to... Um, 
keeping the blog up, that is soup.blogspot.com, as well as keeping this updated with tutorials and demonstrations, overviews, unboxings, etc. All art related things. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, please consider subscribing, and please, please share it with your friends. 